You're sitting on the balcony, fiddling with your phone, when suddenly, everything around you starts to turn to dust. Gaping, you put your phone down. You see cars, bicycles, sidewalks, street, and traffic lights disappear right in front of your eyes. People in the street are panicking and running in different directions. You glance at your watch, and it vanishes too. You turn to look at your room through the balcony door and see that all your furniture is turning to dust. You look back at the street and see nothing but a dust storm. Your house starts shaking. You run downstairs and stand in the middle of the road. You're just in time to see the buildings in your neighborhood fade away. You try to get into your car, but in the next moment, there's nothing in the place where it was standing just a second ago. You check your phone and see several notifications about the world going on a full reset. Everything humans have ever created is now disappearing. You're still holding your phone when it gets lighter and lighter, until it's completely gone. The same process is happening all around the world. The Eiffel Tower, the Pyramids of Giza, the Empire State Building, they have all vanished. You try to find somewhere to hide until this disaster ends. Two years later, you wake up in a cave together with other people. Everything humans have produced throughout the centuries of hard work has disappeared from the face of the earth. Everything that's left behind is people, animals, and nature. Your city is now a massive plain of barren land with a few trees scattered here and there. Your community consists of your former barber, a comic book store manager, local baker, and your neighbors and friends. You head out of the cave to pick up some crops you planted earlier in the season. There's not a building in sight that would obstruct your view. You can see the mountains miles away. That's where the nearest town used to be. And over there, that's the ocean where you once went jogging by the bay. The land is swarming with wildlife. Plenty of raccoons, badgers, possums, and wild cats roam the neighborhood. Next to your tiny garden, there's a large bonfire where you cook food and have your night gatherings. Not too far away, you can see a well. Once, there was an old piping network down there. But when the world reset, it disappeared. The only thing that remained underground was the water that you now use for drinking. Your local police officer is the leader of the community. He stands on a log and says you've only got a week left before the water runs out completely. You'll need to move to another location with a new source of water. You finish your work and take a quick nap because you're on night duty. You walk around the perimeter. There's no light pollution anymore, and stars are gleaming above your head. Two other people are also patrolling the area. Suddenly, you see something running in the distance. You look closely and spot a fox. It's heading to your chicken coop. You run toward the animal and shoo it off. Finally, it's the moving day. Everyone packs their stuff in bags made of rope and begins walking. You've got only one horse carrying supplies and water for everyone. It's going to take around a week on foot to reach the lakes. You make your way through the plain which used to be a highway leading to the next state. It's scorching hot, and your group is moving very slowly. Along the way, you meet other nomadic caravans that trade goods with you. At night, you set up camp next to an old gas station. The building is gone, but the foundation is still there. A week later, you finally make it to the mountains near the lake and enter the forest. You have to walk uphill almost all the way. Soon, it gets too dark. You have to make camp under the cover of old trees. It's a cold night, and the members of your group gather around a campfire. You're back to your night duty when everyone falls asleep. You scout the area and hear some growling sounds. You look around and spot a bear. You duck down and try not to make any noise. Suddenly, you notice that next to you, there's a little bear cub. It's curiously sniffing the air just a dozen of feet away from you. The mama bear roars, calling its kid. You back up slowly. Everything is fine until you accidentally step on a branch. The cub starts wailing. Its mom leaps out from behind the trees and spots you. The massive creature stands up on its hind legs and roars. 
people in the camp wake up in a panic. You run back with the bear right behind you. The leader and the rest of the night patrol manage to scare the furious animal off. You've got tons of experience with foxes and raccoons, but bears are a whole new thing. You realize that you're not at the top of the food chain anymore. The next day, you proceed with extreme caution. Lots of wild animals, like mountain lions and bobcats, are lurking around. You finally make it to the other side of the mountain and see the lake. It's a large area that used to be a public camping spot. Now, there are a couple of settlements built near the water. Your community isn't that big. That's why you settle near the river flowing out of the lake. You build a hut next to the waterfall and continue to work as a farmer. You meet amazing people from other settlements. They used to be scientists, engineers, musicians, doctors. The scientists are trying to figure out a way to rebuild the society based on technology. But it's likely to take decades. They've made the first step by creating a clay oven, pots, and pans. They've also built a dock on the lake and canoes for fishing and transportation. A couple of months pass. You've constructed an irrigation system that uses lake water. The engineers in the settlement have even made a piping system. It delivers fresh water to every house. Now, these specialists are constructing a small dam to generate electricity, but that might take months to do. The settlement is growing bigger with each next week. New huts are being built all the time. A carpenter has created a workshop to make furniture and tools. You no longer have to be on night duty and can focus entirely on your crops. Ever since everything humans had created vanished, people have been much healthier and stronger than before. Yep, there's ice all around, as far as the eye can see. A white desert covers the entrance to your cave, the one where you and a bunch of other settlers live. Everyone's gathered around a fire pit, trying to keep warm, telling each other stories about how much snow they saw the other day. Some are running around playing tag, throwing sticks, whatever people used to do for fun 300,000 years ago. You're one of the earliest Homo sapiens to ever walk the Earth. Others are sleeping or just resting their eyes. All around the cave, all you can hear are stomachs rumbling. Sounds like a wild animal lurking around. You look out the mouth of the cave and see that the storm has cleared. Time to grab some tools and head out as a group. In the open wilderness, you find some berries covered in snow and plants that might be edible. But it's not enough to feed the whole tribe. It's the Ice Age, and there's not much vegetation growing anywhere. One of your friends spots some large footprints in the snow. The chase is on. You can't tell what it is, but it should be enough to feed everyone for a couple of days. As you go deeper into the snow-covered forest, you hear a growl behind you. You hope it's your stomach, but you look behind you and suddenly black out. An ice age is a period when large sheets of ice cover everything, changing the Earth permanently. It's partly responsible for the raising and lowering of sea levels, as well as the current layout of the continents. Picture monster-thick ice sheets spread across what's now Canada, Scandinavia, Russia, and even South America. That's all caused sea levels to change drastically, and temperatures around the world fell dramatically. And I'm not talking about just one ice age. There were a bunch of them. Scientists say there have been five major ice ages throughout history, lasting for millions of years. And we're in the middle of one right now. Relax, don't panic. It doesn't mean we're all going to be sleeping next to bonfires, trying to keep warm after being out all day looking for woolly mammoths. And no, there won't be a massive geological ice storm that freezes everything in its path. Ice ages have warmer periods in them that come and go, lasting for tens of thousands of years. In fact, billions of years ago, the Earth was one giant snowball with no life on it. And the sun back then was also just a cute little fireball without enough heat to melt all that ice. But as the sun got bigger and hotter, Earth's ice slowly melted away, leaving the green and blue ball we have today. 
We're living in the Quaternary Ice Age that's been going on for the past 2.6 million years, and counting. Some animals have thrived in this latest ice age, like whales and sharks. They've been at the top of the food chain for ages. Under them are seals, certain kinds of fish, otters, all the way down to tiny plankton. Up on the cold surface, mammals had to grow thick and shaggy fur just to stay warm. Ancient mammoths, rhinos, and bison were known to have thick rugs on them. They looked awesome. They were herbivores and ate small shrubs and whatever grass they could find. But several thousand years ago, temperatures began to rise, and most of these animals became extinct. The ones that remained evolved into the elephants, hippos, and rhinos we have today. You wake up from your blackout and find yourself face-to-face with a creature that kind of looks like a modern-day bobcat, except it's much bigger and furrier. It's a Smilodon, an epic version of a saber-toothed cat with a mean look. It's around the same size as a male lion and has two front fangs that make me think twice before leaving the safety of my cave. They look scary. But scientists think their bite wasn't as powerful as today's tigers or lions. What made them tough were their giant forearms used to wrestle down anyone who got on their nerves. In packs, they were even able to take down mammoths. Either way, you don't want to be waking up next to this kitty. It's staring you down ready to pounce. But you and your friends keep calm and slowly back off. You get the genius idea to throw a rock to distract it, then run. Nowadays, it's near impossible for a human to outsprint a lion or tiger, but humans back then were much fitter. Once the danger's over, everyone continues to look for food. It's getting dark, and you haven't found anything to bring back to the cave. Suddenly, you smell something burning. Way off in the distance, you see a thin column of smoke rising into the sky. Another settlement? You and your friends look at each other and approach the smoke cautiously. Homo sapiens first came into being about two or three hundred years ago. But human history didn't just pop up out of nowhere. As far back as seven million years ago, some of us decided to call it quits. We left our chimpanzee ancestors in the jungle and started doing our own thing. And that didn't just happen once. Over those next millions of years, there were over 20 different human species. Some were our ancestors, some were twigs from a completely different branch. Some were tiny, others better adapted for hot or cold weather. Before you know it, you see a group of Neanderthals cooking some meat, sharpening their tools. Neanderthals were the first to migrate to Europe. Scientists believe they were around somewhere between 40,000 to 400,000 years ago. They occupied all areas between Europe and Asia, while Homo sapiens, that's us, were still all the way down in Africa. You enter their camp and immediately see the differences between each other. They're stocky and look a bit different, but there are some similarities, like flat teeth for chewing and gnawing and big skulls for their big brains. You feel a bit dizzy, hanging in the air 10 floors above the ground. The only thing that stops you from falling is one of your palms and your shoeless feet. There's a crowd gathered down there in the street, far, far down. People, tiny like ants, keep screaming and pointing their fingers, supposedly at you and your precious cargo. The elderly lady in your arms seems frail and terrified, and still, her hands are surprisingly strong when they hold her cat clutched to her chest. The flames are raging above your head, bursting out of the windows, and the smoke is still burning your throat. It started three weeks ago. You're watching a football match, and your team is losing. After a while, you can't stand it anymore. You leap out of your seat and start pacing in front of the TV. At one point, you get so agitated that you hit the wall with your open palm, and you get stuck. Your first thoughts aren't very coherent. Uh, what's this sticky stuff on my wall? Finger by finger, you unstick your hand, examine it, touch the wall. A couple of minutes later, it finally sinks in. There's indeed something wrong, but not with the wall, with your palms. After a lot, and I mean it, of experimenting, 
you figure out they somehow stick to all kinds of surfaces. You try the floor, window panes, walls, furniture. You even manage to attach yourself to the ceiling. This last idea isn't well thought through as it should have probably been. For almost 10 minutes, you're hanging next to the chandelier, swinging a bit, at a complete loss for what to do next. Once you manage to break free, you drop down on the sofa and start thinking. So, which animals can climb vertical surfaces and even travel upside down? Snails and slugs? But they produce mucus-like slime that helps them move. You stare at your palms. No gooey stuff there. Okay, what's next on the list? Spiders. You Google these creatures and find out the secret of their sticky success. It's minuscule hairs at the ends of their legs. These teeny tiny hairs create countless points of contact between a spider and the surface it's on. Once again, all of your attention is focused on your palms. Are they hairy now? It doesn't seem so. But then you remember reading that a larger and heavier an animal is, the smaller the hairs are. For example, a beetle's hair is about one-tenth the width of a human one. But gecko's is already one-fiftieth the size. Can it be that your hands are covered in tiny hairs, but your eyes simply can't make them out? Then your thoughts take a different turn. You decide to figure out how far your newly acquired abilities stretch. Can you actually walk on the ceiling? During a new series of experiments, you find out the following. The soles of your feet are as sticky as your palms. You start to feel dizzy after three and a half minutes of hanging upside down from the ceiling. You can't unstick and fall down no matter what. You should be more attentive not to bump your head against the ceiling fan again. And no, you can't fly from one wall to another like you've seen some superheroes do. Ow! (laughs) Getting this experience hurt! After practicing and experimenting for hours on end, and ignoring seven calls from your probably, most likely, furious boss, you decide it's time to take it outside. Your apartment is on the fourth floor. Not too high, but nothing pleasant if your bizarre abilities suddenly stop working. You drink some orange juice to pluck up your courage and open the window. Cars moving along the street down there suddenly look much smaller than they did in the morning. Weird, huh? You breathe in and step forward. Whew. At least you aren't hurtling toward the ground. In fact, you're firmly stuck to the wall next to your window. Time to start moving. You've almost made it to the second floor when you decide to take a break. That's when you notice the face. It's pale, with a wide-open mouth and some strange emotion in the eyes. You're pretty sure that's horror. Ah, it must be your downstairs neighbor. (laughs) Unfortunately, you can't tell him there's nothing to be worried about. The man won't hear you, and your hands are kind of occupied. You see your neighbor grabbing his phone. Duh, is he going to call 911? True to form, several minutes later, you hear sirens. In no time, several people are using loudspeakers, trying to calm you down. The help is coming! Hold on! As if something terrible can happen to you at the height of the second floor. And still, soon all this situation becomes too much for you. You get so stressed that instead of moving down to the ground, you climb back into your apartment. All of a sudden, everything goes quiet. You hide in the bathroom and drink another glass of orange juice. When you crawl toward the window half an hour later, the street below is empty. A week has passed, and you finally have to accept the bitter truth. Your downstairs neighbor is doing his best to avoid you. The next day, after discovering your unusual abilities, you realize you can't put it off any longer. You have to return to work. When you arrive at the office, your boss spends a good half an hour telling you off. After that, you're free to go and deal with a pile of working issues. By the end of the working day, you feel as if a diplodocus has chewed on you and then spat you out. But the only escape route is blocked by your boss talking to one of your colleagues. And it doesn't look as if they're going to finish their animated discussion anytime soon. But then, why would you need your super abilities if not to sneak out of places? You open the window and slip through. Oh look, you're getting better at this! During the next several weeks, you discover more and more uses of your wall climbing abilities. For one thing, you can change light bulbs without using a chair. But you have to do this within three and a half minutes, any longer, and you get dizzy. You conquer that mountaintop you've been dreaming about. But before, it seemed too hard for you. 
One night, you try to climb a skyscraper, but you get awfully tired before reaching the top. You save countless kittens stuck on roofs and trees. And now, you even have a criminal story to tell. One evening, a gang of muggers surrounded you. They were trying to get your money and phone. (laughs) They didn't expect you to escape by climbing a smooth vertical wall. It scared them out of their minds. And then, one day, the fire happens. You're driving to work when you see the flames bursting out of an apartment on the 10th floor. Dozens of people have already gathered near the building. You join them and hear someone mention an elderly woman who lives in the apartment with her cat. You understand the time has come for you to use your abilities. You take off your shoes and start climbing the wall of the building. Your ascent is accompanied by screams and loud cheering. After reaching the needed window, you break it and carefully get inside. That day, luck is on your side. For one thing, the lady is really small. It won't be a problem to lift her. Even better, both she and her cat are in the room. Miraculously, the woman doesn't demand long explanations. She grabs the cat, you grab her, and in the next moment, you're all out the window. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.